Good morning, Americans and humans. This is your specially uh, resident alien here. Uh, on the morning of, uh, or yeah, morning of Monday, September 19th, uh, 2022. And uh, yeah, got through a rough week, both physically and mentally last week. Ended up in the hospital. Yeah. <laughs> With my kind of stuff that I got, I always end up over there sometimes. But uh, here's a question for you humans that was put to you by the boss, or however you want to refer to him, supreme being, God, you know, friendly fellow, whatever you want to refer to him as. And he gave you one thing and only one thing in this world. And this is what you got to take away your religion, take away your politics, and take away your greed and the way you think of the world. Because the boss didn't give you with that. He left you with free will. And one question. And most of you, I would say 1%, have answered the question and 99% have not. And therefore lived your lives in terrible situations. And the question relates to everything. Which is. Starts from. You as a little. Infant who can't do a thing for yourself. To when you die. Maybe 65. 75. 85. 95. 100. Or earlier. If your stupid mistakes. There's a lot of people that die because of their stupid mistakes. John F. Kennedy is one of them. Uh, Sonny Bono hitting that poor tree. Oh, boy. See what I mean? Mistakes cost you early. And pressures in life, artificially created. My stepson was one of those. He couldn't handle it, and I'm sorry for him. There's a lot of you that can't handle the pressure of this artificially created world that you have created here, humans. And you don't need that. Because a good civilization gets through this and works itself out. You don't. You are headed for extinction. But back to the question that the boss gave you. Whether you're in a paradox situation as an individual as a married couple, as a nation, or as a society, which you have a paradoxical situation here as a society, human beings, what are you? What is a human? What is it to be human? You don't have the answer to that, therefore you're paradox. But the question is, and the answer is so simple. The question is, what do you do when you're in a paradoxical situation? And let me take a for instance here. Heterosexual men and women when they are married. And this affects the same thing with gays, okay? Whether you're a he, she, a she, he, or what's it? Two men, two women, whatever you want to call it. It affects you too. Because it affects all humans on this planet. And like I said, the question is, what do you do in a paradox? Let me take married men and women. They sign this little paper that says, I do. Right? Yes. But then they come in with baggage. The women comes in with her baggage. The men come in with his baggage. And you play a stupid game of, oh, well, I'm over you, and you got to submit, or I got to compromise the hell out of my beliefs to stay with you, or we have nothing in common. Women understand this question better than men. 
Only about 1% of the men get this question, and maybe 97% of women get it. And the answer is so simple. But because of the 1% only men get it, it costs you a lot. Ask the women that got divorced. Not the men who seek divorce, but the women who seek divorce. The men seek divorce because they find something else more interesting at the other end. Most of the time, I would say about 98% of the time, 2% of the time the man just doesn't understand and he gives up on the marriage. But 97% of the women give up and the answer to the question is, what do you do in a paradox? And 97% of the women will tell you, the reason I got divorced is I took too many for the team. And the answer to the question humans, is I took one for the team. Men, you never get this. So it's no sense trying to talk to you about this. Women, you do. Because you take too many for the team. Case in point, my wife and I were different, opposites, in everything you could think of. Her children could tell you about their mother. She had unique quirks, that most women have, and most men try to either change the quirks, push them out of her, or do anything. I decided to go with them. Take it for the team. And it takes a little while. It took two years for my wife. But she noticed that I was taking it for the team. And she changed she still had her quirks. Well, we used to go to a restaurant. <laughs> and my stepson, Jimmy, can tell you about this. Uh, with my wife in a restaurant, no matter what you brought her to eat, there was something wrong. It was too hot, too cold. I don't like this. I don't like that. Yeah, you know, because it comes with the thing, you know. But the waiters would be kind of put off about this. And I would tell them, hey. Just take one for the team. Just go over there and tell them she wants it this way. You know, something simple. Diffuse the situation. And sooner or later, most of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, your other spouse should get it. But like I said, if your other spouse is a woman and a man is doing this for you, they'll get it in a hurry. Men, only 1% of you will get it, and boy, you're heading towards divorce. Anyway, this is your favorite alien, and it works for everything. For nations against nations. For bosses and employees. For police and their suspects. It works for everything, if you know how to use it right. This is your favorite alien telling you this. Good day.